for more. Let's go to New York. Jason Stearns, a director of the Congo Research Group at New York University. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you. Uh, from the get-go, uh, you've been uh, looking with your team at sampling uh, from uh, what results we've gotten. And uh, uh, the day that Felix Chisichetti was announced as the surprise provisional winner, you already expressed doubts. Uh, now, let's take a look at uh, this, uh, these leaked results um, and the leaked results which uh, appear to, uh, to show that... Um, the, that, that the sources inside of the, uh, of, of, of the Electoral Commission much more in line uh, with what uh, the uh, Catholic observers inside the country have uh, found rather than uh, with what the official tally is and by a long, mar long shot. What, what, what do you make of, uh, of these new results published by the FT and RFI? Well, we received, we worked on these results together with them. Uh, we find them credible enough to publish them. We published them on our website, along with results from the Catholic Church. I think that you can analyze uh, their credibility on through various ways. You can look at the file itself. There was, we gave this to data experts who looked at the file, who said there did not, it did not seem to be a forgery. It includes 49,000 lines of data, uh, which are uh, 49,000. Each line is basically a polling, a polling site. And um, uh, if this were indeed a forgery, you would have had to uh, concoct this information from scratch, more or less, and make and it, it just wasn't the time. With the, well, it would have been very little time. So that's that's one way of of looking at it. And all of the information matched. So there's you know all these there's each polling station has a number. Each polling station has the name of the school or the church or the institution where it was held. So all of that would have had to conform. And a lot of that information was published at the last minute by the Electoral Commission. So basically, they would have had 10 days or two weeks to concoct 49,000 lines of data. So it's feasible, but extremely difficult. I think the way the, the, the clincher for us was the fact that we were able to obtain also a leak from the largest observation mission in the country, the Catholic Church observation mission. They fielded 40,000 election observers on election day. Um, they were able to tally set over 70% of all of the polling stations that were able to tally sort of a parallel tabulation process. And there we obtained a leak of their results that are not public, but these results conform almost identically to the results of this electoral commission leak. Now, so at, in the, at the provincial level, if you look at each 26 provinces, each province, you look at them, and there is at the most two or 3% difference between, uh, between the two leaks. So that really showed to us this was extremely credible as so we published it and are now asking for the Electoral Commission to publish a breakdown of the election data by polling station, which is the only way we really know whether the, the, result, the results they announced are the real results or not. Yeah, because last Friday, uh, the uh, spokesperson for that uh, Catholic Observer mission uh, said to the Security Council exactly that, this is the heart of the matter, uh, that why won't the uh, National Electoral Commission publish a breakdown at least by region uh, of the vote? Has that happened since? It is not. I think the only way it has to go beyond, they did say yesterday, they told the Congolese news organization they were going to publish a breakdown to the level of the electoral district, um, which is still too large really to be able to confirm. So what happened basically is there were election observers across the country, even normal citizens could go to each of the polling stations and the results after the polls were closed, the, poll, the votes were counted and the results were posted outside each polling station. That's the law. And people could take pictures of those results. And so, you know, thousands of Congolese citizens now have pictures of these results. It would be very easy to verify whether the Electoral Commission's official results were cooked or not. They just need to, 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 to publish the list of the results broken down to the level of the polling site. There's about 17,000 polling sites, around 21,000 polling centers around the country. Just publish those results, and then anybody could check for themselves whether the results of their own personal polling site was correct or not. And that would allow us as well to see whether the leak we received was authentic or not. What are the chances of the Constitutional Court uh, upholding uh, Martin Fayoulou's appeal and uh, uh, striking down the provisional results? Um, I think the relatively slim. The Constitutional Court has in the past showed that it is relatively sympathetic towards the ruling coalition of Joseph Kabila. 
uh, the, during the proceedings that um, uh, what we know from the proceedings so far is that they haven't been overly curious uh, about the process. They haven't asked very many incisive questions, I would say, of the Electoral Commission itself. And so I think that the chances are, are probably slim, which is depressing given the fact that this is the last recourse uh, that we have to challenge the election results. Jason Stearns, I uh, want to talk about regional reactions. Last weekend, uh, there was that very strong statement from SADC, the group of Southern African nations demanding a recount. They've now, that group led by uh, the likes of South Africa, Zambia, Angola, seems to have rolled it all back. They've been holding a meeting, an uh, emergency meeting in Addis Ababa with South Africa's president, Angola's president, both in attendance. Meanwhile, we have the African Union uh, Secretariat Chair uh, doubting the credibility of the result. And yet we also have this statement by the, uh, pres the uh, chairperson uh, of the African Union itself, Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame, um, who said that uh, the meeting that they're staging today is, quote, aimed at preventing the people outside of our continent to meddle trying to find solutions for us. What does that tell you? Well, we don't know what the outcome of that last meeting is going to be, the one chaired by President Kagame. So I'm not I'm not sure what they will say. I think that certainly the earlier today, the meeting that was held by the Southern African Development Commun Community, SADC, their statement was very uh, was very disappointing. It was very weak. It basically um, congratulated the Congolese people and said that we need to respect whatever the constitutional court says. I think that, as you pointed out, SADC has, has gone up and down on this, and different countries have been all over the place. We know that the Angolans and the South Africans, who are key players in SADC, have been in private, very critical of the Kabila government. Uh, but I feel also that many of these governments not, are, are happy with the fact that, you know, Kabila's anointed successor, Shadari, did not win these elections. Yes, perhaps there was rigging, but it was rigging in favor of an opposition candidate, and so you have democratic alternates. And I think that they may be happy with that. And so you've seen a roller coaster ride in terms of regional opinion on this. And I think where it's ended up is um, largely uh, allowing or at least confirming or stepping back, at least from overtly condemning uh, the elections. Jason Stearns, director of the Congo Research Group at New York University. Many thanks for joining us here on France 24. Thank you.